Okay, in today's video, we're going to look at finding the trigonometric function of any angle. So we're going to put together everything we've learned so far in the semester and helping us evaluate trigonometric functions of any angle. So we're expanding past the unit circle. So we're not only going to be on the unit circle. After learning how to do that, we're going to learn some properties and some identities in trigonometry. So the first ones are the even and odd properties of the trigonometric functions and then all the fundamental trigonometric identities. So starting with our goal one, evaluating trigonometric functions of an angle. So now we're expanding off of the unit circle. So we're going to use some of the techniques that we learned in the last class on dealing with the unit circle. Um, but this time, um, our points would go farther than, than a radius of one. So let's say if I have a point here, which is my x, y point. Okay, so now my length of this line segment is not necessarily 1, it's theta instead. But, I mean, it's r instead. But this angle here is our angle theta that we're looking at. Let me zoom in a little bit. That's our angle theta that we're looking at. So, given that information, since that's the point x comma y, that means I've traveled x distance on the um, x-axis, and I've gone up a y distance. So I have a right triangle here. And so to figure out our relation, relationship between x, y, and r, we just use Pythagorean theorem, right triangle Pythagorean theorem. So that means that if I take the leg squared plus the other leg squared, that'll give us our radius squared. So that's a fundamental. Now, if I wanted to solve this equation for r, I would take the square root of each side. Now, normally when you take the square root of each side, we will always, you know, you always put that plus or minus here. But I'm looking at this unit circle and I'm dealing with our um, theta here, our angle, and our radius is a distance here. So our radius is always going to be positive. So since our radius is always positive, we don't do the plus or minus in this formula. And we just say that r is equal to the square root of um, x squared plus y squared. So r will always be a positive measurement. Um, by definition. So let's put this down. So let theta be an angle in standard position with x, y is a point on the terminal side of theta. Then r has been defined as the square root of x squared plus y squared. So just like in our unit circle, we're going to go and we're going to figure out our sine, cosine, and tangent. So if I'm back to this angle theta in my diagram, my triangle up here, an angle theta, and I wanted to find sine of theta. Well, sine of theta, sine on right triangle trigonometry is opposite over hypotenuse. And so our opposite side is y, our hypotenuse side is r. So with the unit circle, r was one, so we just disappeared and it became y. So sine of any angle that's not on the unit circle is not y, but y divided by r. So that's the difference in between when we're outside the unit circle. And But everything else is still the same. So, um, cosecant is equal to 1 divided by sine. So 1 divided by y over r, this flips that over. And so my cosecant of theta is r over y. Now I'm going to go back to right triangle trig to find my cosine of theta. So cosine of theta is adjacent side over hypotenuse my right triangle. So my adjacent side is x, my hypotenuse is my radius, r. So cosine of theta is x divided by r. So the reciprocal identity secant of theta is 1 over cosine or r over x. And tangent of theta, right triangle trig, is opposite over adjacent side. So our opposite of angle theta up there in my diagram is y. My adjacent leg is x. So that stayed the same because the r, it doesn't have r in it. So that one stayed the same from our unit circle one. So tangent of theta is y over x. So that makes cotangent of theta x divided by y. This is called the definition of trigonometric um, functions of any angle. So these are new. I should include this. R. Those are new formulas to identify. So basically our radius is not 1, it is R instead. So our process of solving any angle, which we're going to be given the point, x, y point on the terminal angle, is first we're going to plot theta in standard position. 
Okay, we mainly do this so that we can identify the quadrant. And which our angle is um, located in. That gives us which angle, which trig function will be positive and which trig functions will be negative. Then we're going to figure out our radius length by using that formula I just talked about that radius is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then we're going to use the definition of trigonometric function, which is these formulas up here, to figure out our six trigonometric functions of a given angle. So let's try one. Let the point negative 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side of theta. Find the six trigonometric functions of theta. So step one, sketch the angle in standard position. Okay, so the angle in standard position, initial side is on the positive x-axis. Terminal side is going through the point negative 3, so 1, 2, 3, and positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So go through the point negative 3, comma 4. So that's where my terminal side goes through. So this is my angle theta that I'm looking at. Now what I like to do from this point is to kind of make my right triangle because if I do my right triangle, my reference angle, which is theta prime here, will give me all the same information. So I've gone to the left three, so x is negative three. I've gone up four. And so now I just need to figure out my radius. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's gonna be nine plus 16, which is square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So I know now that my x is negative 3, my y is 4, and my r is 5. So to find sine of theta, which is y over r, that's going to be 4 over 5. Find cosine of theta, which is x over r, that's going to be negative 3 over 5, or negative 3 fifths. And tangent is y over x, which is going to be 4 over negative 3. Whoops, negative 3. Let me write that a little prettier. Negative um, y, which is 4 over 3. Okay. And then our reciprocal identities, um, cosecant is equal 1 over sine, so that's going to be 5 fourths. Secant is 1 over cosine, so flipping that over, that goes and give me negative 5 thirds. And then cotangent is 1 over tangent, so flipping that over is negative 3 fourths. And you found your six trigonometric functions of this angle, not on the unit circle. Okay, sometimes we do have some difficulty level when you're just given um, just a little bit of data. You might, um, so let's see how we'd work a problem when we're given. The tangent of theta is negative 5 fourths and cosine of theta is positive. Find all six trigonometric functions. All right, so recall that tangent, let me get another color. Recall that tangent of theta by our definition our tangent of theta is equal to y over x so and um so since so that tells us that our y must be five our x must be four but i don't know if my x is negative or my y is is the negative so i have to figure out which one is negative and we're going to use that by the second given information and to figure out which quadrant we're in. So first off, I notice my, my tangent value is negative. So I have to figure out which quadrant has a tangent that is negative. Well, tangent is negative in quadrant three, um, quadrant two and quadrant four. And then of those two um, quadrants where tangent is negative, my cosine needs to be positive. Well, X is only positive in quadrant four of those two possibilities that we have. 
So that means that I am in quadrant four. So in quadrant four, I recall that sine is, my cosine is positive, my sine is negative. So that means my Y has to be, has to get the negative and the X gets the positive. So that's how I determine which number, the five or the four, that gets the negative here. Okay. So now I can plot this in standard position. All right, so my X has gone over four and then I've gone down five on the Y. So this is the point four, negative five. And so we have our reference angle here. This is four and this is negative five. So I need to find my R value. So R is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared, which is 16 plus 25, which is 41. So R is equal to the square root of 41. So sine of theta is Y over R. Y is negative five. R is the square root of 41. I need to rationalize that. And I get negative five, the square root of 41 over 41. Let me write that in the answer box. So negative, this, um, four, negative five, square root of 41 over 41. Okay. Oh, you can't quite see the negative. Okay. Cosine All right, so we know that cosine of theta is equal to x over r. So x is 4, r is the square root of 41, rationalizing that denominator. We get 4 the square root of 41 over 41, which does not simplify down. And it, we're in quadrant um, four, so cosine should be positive, and it is, so that works out great. Now, to find tangent of theta, well, sorry, we're given tangent of theta, we don't need to find it. So tangent of theta is negative five-fourths. So flipping that over, that gives me negative four-fifths. Now, I can flip this cosine over, 41 over four, the square root of 41, rationalize again. And then simplify down. And we get this. Or, instead of doing all that rationalizing work, you could go back to this unrationalized answer for cosine, which was four um, divided by square root of 41 and flip that over, which gives us square root of 41 over four, which is the same answer. Okay. So square root of 41 over four is my cos, my cos, sorry, secant. I'll talk about that in a minute. All right. And then another way that you can do this, if I wanted to figure out um, secant, I could do one over sine, but, or I could remember from my definition, cosecant is r over y. So r is the square root of 41, y is negative 5, so my answer is negative, the square root of 41 over 5. Okay, so you have a couple ways of finding that. So those are examples of finding the trigonometric function of any angle. So we're expanding past the unit circle. Okay, now we're going to start talking about some properties of trigonometric functions. The first property we want to talk about is even or odd properties. So first off, let's um, remember from college algebra that an odd function is defined as if you replace every x with negative x and you simplify down, you get the opposite of the original function. So if f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, it is odd. 
And our definition of even function, we replace every x with negative x, simplify it down, and we get back to our original function, then it is even. So f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, f of negative x is equal to, is, equals odd, and if f of negative x equals f of x, the original, it is even. Every trigonometric function is either odd or even. And how I remember this is I remember the even ones. There's only two trigonometric functions that are even, and that is cosine of theta is an even trigonometric function, and its reciprocal secant of theta are the only even trigonometric functions. So memorize that. Cosine is an even trigonometric function, and if I take that cosine, one over an even function is still an even function. So cosine of theta and secant of theta are even function. All other trigonometric functions, sine is reciprocal cosecant, tangent and is reciprocal cotangent are all odd trig functions. Okay, so you need to memorize that. So what does that tell us? Well, using this property, if I replace every x, in this case we'll use theta, with every theta with negative theta, for odd functions, I should get opposite of f of theta, opposite of what we plugged in. So what that means, if, if I want to figure out sine of negative theta, so sine of negative theta will have to, its sine is odd, so that's going to be opposite of whatever sine of theta equals. So I just figure out what sine of theta is and put a negative, uh, change the sign, put an opposite of it. And so that is also true with cosecant. Cosecant of negative theta is negative cosecant of theta. Okay. Tangent and cotangent are our other odd functions. So that means that tangent of negative theta is negative tangent of theta. And cotangent of negative theta is negative cotangent of theta. Those are our odd trigonometric functions. Now, cosine and secant are our even trigonometric functions. So cosine and negative theta just gives us cosine of theta. We don't change the sign. And secant and negative theta just gives us secant of theta. All right, so let's do an example of how we could use this. Very basic to start with here. So we're going to figure out, all we know is cosine of theta is negative 3 fourths. We want to figure out cosine of negative theta. So I know cosine of theta is an even function. So if, cos if cosine of theta is negative 3 fourths, cosine of negative theta, since it's even, has to be the same as our, co our original function. So that this, our cosine has to be the same as original because even our cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta. So it's just our original back. Secant is also an even function. So if I wanted to figure out the secant of negative theta, that would be equal. So secant of negative theta, since it's e even, is going to be equal to my secant of theta. Well, if cosine of theta is negative 3 fourths, our secant of theta is flipping that over. So our answer is negative 4 thirds. All right. For B, we were given sine of negative theta is equal to 3 eighths. And we want to figure out sine of theta. So first I remember that sine is an odd function. So sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. So if I want to figure out sine of theta, I take what sine of negative theta is and I do the opposite. So negative 3 eighths would be my answer. And then cosecant is also an odd function. So I figure out what my cosecant of negative theta is. And that happens to be 8 thirds. Flip it over. And if I want to find the cosecant of theta, that means it's going to be the opposite of our original function value. So negative 8 thirds. Okay, next we're going to learn the fundamental trig, trig identities. There's three groups of fundamental trig identities. Reciprocal identities, 
quotient identities, and then Pythagorean identities. Now, reciprocal identities we've already been talking about as we've gone through these um, angles of the unit, the all six angle um, trigonometric functions of the unit circle, and we did it earlier today, but I didn't formally write it down, so I'm going to formally write it down. The reciprocal identities is just our definition what cosecant is and secant and cotangent. Cosecant of theta, by definition, is 1 over sine of theta. So that is a reciprocal identity. Cosecant is equal to 1 over sine of theta. Secant, of course, is 1 over cosine of theta. And, tan and cotangent is 1 over tangent of theta. That's how we're being able to flip them over when we're working out these trigonometric, the six trigonometric functions so far. Okay. Another one that we haven't talked about much, or you, we've used a little bit but not very often, is what's called the quotient identities. And it's called quotient because you take a trig function by, by a trig function. So um, another way that I can rewrite tangent of theta is, remember, tangent by definition is y over x. And on the unit circle, y is the same as sine, x is the same as cosine. So our our quotient identity for tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And cotangent is x over y, x is cosine, y is sine. So our, quote, co, our quotient identity for cotangent of theta is cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Now, I'm going to show you another way in which um, we're going to apply these formulas to figure out these trigonometric functions. We've already been doing them in our head. I'm just kind of, kind of formally write it down. So I've given you that the sine of theta is 1 over square root of 5. And I didn't rationalize that just to make it easier to work with. And cosine of theta is 2 over the square root of 5. But you, of course, would normally rationalize. But since the original problem is not rationalized, you're, you're, you're okay. All right, so... I want to use my quotient identity. That tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta to figure out my tangent of theta here. So I gave in that sine was 1 over square root of 5. Cosine is 2 over the square root of 5. So 1 over square root of 5 times by square root of 5 over 2 which gives us one, one half, okay? Tangent theta is one half using that kind of identity. Okay, now the, I'm gonna use my reciprocal identities. To figure out the other trigonometric functions. So um, I cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine of theta. All right, so that's 1 over 1 over the square root of 5, which is just simply the square root of 5. Secant of theta is equal to 1 over cosine of theta. That's 1 over 2 to the square root of 5. So flipping that over gives us square root of 5 over 2. So we've been doing these, but we've been doing them in our head not writing them down as the formal process of what we're doing. The only reason I'm kind of writing them down now is when we get to solving trigonometric equations and, and um, verifying trig functions, trig identities, we'll need to be able to work with these formulas. So we're going to start being able to thinking about those formulas. And so cotangent of theta, I'm going to use my quotient identity for this one, and that's cosine of theta divided by... Um, sine of theta. So cosine of theta is 2 to the square root of 5. Divide, which I'm going to flip and multiply, sine of theta, which gives us 2. Okay, so we kind of been using those, but you'll see the working of them a little bit more as we go along in the unit. Okay, remember I said the fundamental, there, um, there are three types of fundamental identities. We have our spickle identities, our qu quotient identities, and our last one is our Pythagorean identities. So this Pythagorean identities comes back to the idea of a um, Pythagorean theorem. With right triangle trig, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. 
you know, we've been doing, we did that formula in order to find our R in here at the very beginning when we had to find R is what R is equal to when we're finding the trigonometric function of any angle. Well, let's go to the unit circle. If I move to the unit circle, radius is now equal to 1. So I have x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, remember, x is corresponding to our cosine, and y corresponds to our sine. And so this is our first Pythagorean identity, but for some reason, and I'm not sure why, we always write sine first. So we have our Pythagorean identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. I don't know why you always see it that way written in books, because it really doesn't matter which way it is, because addition is commutative property. It doesn't matter which way you write it. Okay, so that's our first Pythagorean identity. And that's the fundamental. If you memorize that one, you can, you'll be able to figure out the other two Pythagorean identities just by working with this one here. So to figure out the next um, fundamental trig identity, the next Pythagorean identity, I'm going to divide each side of this equation by sine squared. So sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared. Well, cosine divided by sine, we have a definition that's cotangent using our quotient identities. So I got 1 plus cotangent squared theta. And 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared theta. So our second Pythagorean identity is cosecant squared theta is equal to 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. And then our last trigonometric identity, I'm going to go back to the Pythagorean, the first Pythagorean identity. Like I said, this is the only one you have to memorize. And then you can calculate or figure out the other ones if you know how to find the these other two. So if sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, now I'm going to divide each side by cosine squared. You know, I can divide, if I divide each side by the same thing, I'm not changing the equation any. So this time I get sine squared divided by cosine squared, well that's tangent squared, plus cosine squared divided by cosine squared, that's one. And one over cosine is secant, so that'd be secant squared. So our third Pythagorean identity formula is secant squared of theta is equal to tangent squared of theta plus one. And these are the three Pythagorean identities that you just try getting used to and knowing and we'll work with those in a little bit more detail as we go on. So given that sine of theta is equal to one-third and cosine of theta is negative, use the fundamental identities to find the exact value of each of the remaining five trigonometric functions. Okay, so we're going to start with our Pythagorean identity, since we're given sine here. So I have sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. And first thing I want to do is I, I know sine, but I don't know cosine. So I'm going to solve this equation for cosine. So I got cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And so cosine squared theta is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Well, I know that sine is equal to 1 third. So I'm going to minus a third. And that third needs to be squared. So that's going to be 1 ninth. We got 1 minus 1 ninth. And so 9, that's 8 ninths. Cosine squared theta. Oh, well. Oh. Once I took the square root, I need to cancel out the cosine squared. I'm now just cosine. Okay. 
I took the square root of you, so I got rid of that. All right, so we know cosine of theta is either going to be positive or negative. The square root of 8 over the square root of 9, which is 3. And square root of 8 will simplify down to 2, the square root of 2 over 3. And then I asked myself, okay, I was given that cosine is negative. So that means I would write the negative answer, negative 2, the square root of 2 over 3. So I figured out my cosine, I was given my sine. And so tangent again is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. Sine is one third. Cosine is negative two, the square root of two over three. So tangent of theta is gonna be equal to one third times by negative three divided by two, the square root of two, which is negative one, two, the square root of two, rationalizing that. And I end up with negative square root of two over two times two, which is four. So negative square root of two over four would be our tangent. And then, all right, to find cosecant of theta, that's one over sine of theta. So cosecant of theta is equal to one over one third, which is three. And then secant of theta is equal to one over cosine of theta, which is one over negative two to the square root of two over three, which is three over negative two to the square root of two, rationalizing that, three to the square root of two over four negative. So that's going to be negative 3 to the square root of 2 over 4. And then cotangent, of course. That's kind of messy. Try that again. Cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent of theta. So that's 1 over the square root of 2 over 4 negative. So that's negative 4 the square root of 2, rationalizing it. Negative 4, the square root of 2 over 2. And that simplifies down to negative 2, the square root of 2. And now you've used the trigonometric identities to find your, your six trigonometric functions. So that's another way to look at these.